jacket so weak in the knee <laughs> so I can hardly speak his palms are sweaty his knees are weak his arms are heavy oh um, this part on his sweater already poor thing do you all know the song do you all know the two songs that I made a mashup of talking about stage fright if you know them, put it in the comment section below. Today, I have 10, 10 tips on ho how to overcome stage fright. Let's get right into them. And we'll also include the what, what part of your body makes you feel anxious. A little, we got to get a little anatomy and physiology. I have 10 of them. And then I'm going to talk about some things that people do that don't quite serve them to get them ready to go on stage that... You know, it's not the best choices. I have 10 really good things that you can do. And let's just get right into the first one, shall we? Number one, the number one thing to overcome stage fright is be prepared. Be prepared. Yes, make sure that you have practiced you understand what the assignment is. If you're supposed to go up there singing, if you have a two minute time to sing, your song is ready. You chopped it down to two minute time frame. If you're supposed to be dancing, you've practiced your dance, you have your routine down pack, be prepared. If you're supposed to wear a red skirt with a black top, have your red skirt with a black top ready, packed in a bag. You can do that beforehand. Don't wait to the last minute. Be prepared, and that will absolutely help you with stage fright. You know, Dr. D. Nice, I talk a lot. I go to a lot of schools. And once again, if you ever want me to come talk to your school, your classrooms about any subject, the other day I did stress management, and I did. I had my little list of things. I wanted to take stickers for wisdom teething or stickers I had in my bag. I had my speech kind of outlined with me. I had my laptop just in case I'd already sent the slides to the organizers and I had my laptop just in case their stuff messed up. Be prepared. I'm telling you, you do that and you will decrease some of the fear. We're number two. Shift your focus from the people to the purpose. If you are there just worried about, oh, what are they thinking about? No. Focus on there is somebody there that wants to this message that you're going to give, wants to be blessed by your dance, your talent. There's somebody there that deserves for you to show up and be your best. And if you switch the focus to purpose and not people, man, then you don't have to worry about it. Because a lot of times a fear is just wondering how the people are taking it, how the people are going to receive what it is that you're doing. Are you, are you catching what I'm throwing? And if they don't look like they are, and then you get all nervous. So really switch the focus to the purpose of what you are there for that specific day. If you're there to give a speech on stress management, just understand that, you know, somebody, some young person is there, some, one of your classmates are there ready to learn about stress. If you're supposed to be playing the piano, you're going to inspire somebody to take up playing the piano. Purpose. Number three, and this is all about the physiology of what's happening to you when you're feeling nervous, stage fright, performance anxiety. Take some deep breaths, some deep diaphragmatic breaths. When you're breathing in, when you're breathing in, your belly should go out. And when you're breathing out, your belly should go in. <sighs> and these are diaphragmatic breaths. You're not hyperventilating. Look it up. I even have some videos somewhere on it. Just look it up. Diaphragmatic breaths, belly breaths. Take those and those will absolutely relax your body. Let me show you what's going on when you're nervous and anxious. Here we go. This is what's happening here. Your body is actually being stimulated to stimulate the fight or flight 
response. And that's like a, a nervous system that's a, okay, it's an autonomic nervous system. This is the part of your body just happens without you thinking about it. And when you're nervous, it kicks in part of it called the sympathetic nervous system. And it has the hormone adrenaline, or if you're really sciencey, it's epinephrine or norepinephrine or nor noradrenaline. And when that happens, your pupils get dilated. <laughs> Just like in the Eminem song, we talked about your increased sweating, your palms are sweaty, your your get you get can get nauseous. You can get uh, feel like you just can't breathe well because everything is just ah, and your heart is racing you're you feel a little bit more congested you're, you're there's decreased mucus in your nose your just all these things will happen when that sympathetic nervous system is stimulated and that's what's causing you to get nervous that's what's causing your body to just feel all out of sorts when you're about to when you're about to perform deep breathing will kind of counteract that deep breathing will stimulate the parasympathetic the counterbalance with which is a whole nother set of hormones it is um oh lord <laughs> why is it that my brain has just straight up acetylcholine acetylcholine it just it's a totally different hormone it balances each other out and so if you can take some deep breaths, it will just stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is another part of the automatic thing that just happens in your body. I know we went left all sciencey for a second. Stay with me. I promise you that's the end of it. We're just going to go right into the other, the other seven tips. So that was just taking a deep breath to help the parasympathetic nervous system to balance off what some of the things that your body is feeling because the sympathetic nervous system got you all shaky and jittery. All right. Number four, avoid stimulating food. Okay. So the sympathetic nervous system got you all wired and shaky and jittery and you just, I can't do it. I can't, but my voice is trembling. I can't speak. I can't sing. I can't play a piano. I can't dance. I can't do nothing but shake. You don't want to add foods that make you shake too. So sugary foods, processed foods, caffeinated drinks, they're all going to make it worse. They're going to heighten some of those things that you're feeling. Stay away from them before a performance. You may like, oh, it will get me awake. What it will do, it'll make you even more nervous. One of the things I do, honestly, you don't have to do it. Before I'm about to do a presentation, I tend not to eat at all, just in case if I get queasy and nauseous, there's nothing about to throw up. But, you know, once again, I that's not why I do it, because I never get queasy and nauseous in my stomach like that. That's not one of the things that I feel when I'm about to give a pre presentation. I usually get like very like jittery inside of me and I take some deep breaths. What I um, what I the what I do, though is I tend to not eat anything. I just want all the blood flow to really go to my brain so I can think straight to present the information correctly. Avoid stimulating foods and drinks, processed foods, processed sugars, and ca things that are caffeinated. All right, number five. Ooh, number five. <laughs> You don't, you want to find some way to get rid of that extra energy that you're feeling because of the adrenaline, because of the norepinephrine, because of the epinephrine. Go for a run and you can burn that off, burn off some of the excess energy. Have some sort of performance, pre-performance routine. Maybe you can do some push-ups, some squats, a dance routine, something to just physically remove some of that excess energy that's being pushed out into your body because of that sympathetic nervous system response that's happening because of your, you're about, you're like, all these people, they're going to eat me. <laughs> they're going to think I, I'm, I'm crazy. They're going to think I can't do anything. And you're just thinking all these thoughts. 
And on top of that, you're just, you're just nervous. You really just want to swift, shift, shift the focus, go for a run, do something that could burn off some of that excess energy prior to your performance. And speaking of switch in focus, we have number six. Focus on a friendly face in the audience. There's always going to be somebody that's busy, that's on their phone, that's talking to their friend, that maybe not even like what you're doing, what you're saying. Maybe think they think that, oh, whatever, oh, you again. No, don't focus on that person. Focus on the person that is fully in tune with what you're saying. As a matter of fact, before you do a performance, you can even like walk around in the audience before the show starts, walk around and meet the people. You'll meet somebody ahead of time, especially when they've already spoken to you beforehand. You can go out in the audience and kind of talk to people. You establish some sort of rapport. At least, you know, there's one going to be one person in there that's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I knew them. They said they went to high school in Florida, just like me or their, their mom and dad. And I are this, you know, know my friends from down the street. And, you know, you can find some common ground to connect with somebody in the audience and focus on that person because they all are now besties for life. OK, that's a little trick that a lot of presenters presenters do, including myself, Dr. Dean Ice. I always try to find somebody in the audience already ahead of time. And I even, I'll even flat, flat out ask him, listen, if I'm, even if I'm up there bombing, you need to clap. You need to laugh. Like this is the best joke you've ever heard in your life. Talking about helping you get over performance anxiety. All right. Number seven, number seven, stay in your lane. Be yourself. Now, a lot of times you may be like, oh, yeah, you want to go out there and try something new. Nothing. I'm not saying don't try something new. The day of the presentation, though, is not going to be the day that you go out there try, being all experimenty. Because that alone is going to make you nervous. It is not what you practice. And I'm not saying you can't be flexible. There's a little bit of a difference than just going out there and just doing something strange and weird that doesn't even fit you. Let me try to think of an example. For example, you know you are not a dancer. Absolutely not a dancer. Then you're going to pop up on stage trying to do a full dance presentation, not a comedy dance presentation, not something that's supposed to be Oh, happy, happy, joy, joy, and being silly. You want to be have a serious dance presentation, a serious dance recital. You are not a dancer. Stay in your lane. You are a singer. Sing. If you want to be a dancer for the next show, you do that, but you make sure you practice ahead of time. Stay in your lane. Be yourself. Don't let anybody push you into a different lane and have you up there embarrassing yourself because we all don't have the same gifts. Don't let nobody lie to you. We all are not talented that way. We have our thing that we can do, and we have our thing that we can do well. Not saying you can't go out and try some things and learn to do other things, but the day of the performance, the day of the presentation, when the whole crowd's out there, that is not the day. All right. Number eight. Here we go. Number eight. Lean into that feeling of anxiety. Yes. You're feeling sweaty? Just, okay, well, well, we're sweating now. That's what we're doing. It's just, it's really your body telling you that I'm getting you ready to perform. I'm getting ready for you to, this is your people. <laughs> Lean into that feeling. If your heart is racing, fine. Your heart is racing like, Oh yeah, my heart is pumping blood and it works and it's getting me ready. You're breathing heavy. You can take some deep breaths. Oh, look at my, look at that breath moving through my body. This is great. Lean into it and even learn to manage how it feels. There was a performer and I can't remember their name. They 
and I'm about to just totally mess up the quote. If y'all know it, let me know in the comment section. Well, they enjoyed that feeling. They said that, oh, it makes them know, remind them that they're alive and they're about to fulfill their purpose. Something like that. Something cheesy like that. But it works. Lean into that feeling. There are people that have been performing and singing every day. Wendy Williams, you know, y'all know she's one of my faves. She's she has been a DJ for years on the radio. Then she had her talk show. She said that every single day she still got nervous. She never got used to it. And she was doing this for decades. Understand that it's one of those things that just naturally happens to your body. It's preparing you to perform. Lean into that feeling. It's all good. Just get out there and get it done. You have a purpose. Somebody there is wanting to hear the gift that you have to present. Number nine, think positive thoughts. This is not time to think, oh, what's the worst that could happen if I go up there and I trip and I fall off the stage and I forget my words and okay, nobody knows what you're supposed to say. And even if they did, well, all right, let me, there's not, somebody knew what you were supposed to say, but it's okay. It's good. But not everybody did. How are they going to know if you messed up or you didn't mess up? Maybe that's exactly what you wanted it to do. Be free to laugh when you've messed up, to laugh at yourself and keep it pushing. Think positive. Don't be negative about the situation. You're there to fulfill your goal of being a singer. You're there to fulfill your goal of being an actress or giving the speech to the school, your valedictorian speech, your salutatorian speech, something, whatever it is, just lean into it and be positive and enjoy the entire experience. And last but not least, number 10 is take somebody that loves you with you. You, we all have that one person that is our cheerleader. Make sure they are there screaming loud in the audience, backstage, wherever you want them to be. Bring your own little support system, your own little cheer section. Bring them with you. <laughs> there you go. There are your 10 tips to overcome stage fright. If any of y'all are performers or presenters, let me know in the comment section below. What is your favorite tip to do before you present? Wisdom teethingers, if you're a teen or you're in your early 20s, all these are for you. Let me know which one of them you plan to start using. Here are two things that you should not use, though. A lot of people tend to drink or smoke or do some drugs to either calm themselves down or lift themselves up. What you going to do if them drugs don't do what they're supposed to do? They backfire. Somebody puts something in it. And then you're out there just acting a plum fool, embarrassing yourself on the stage for real. And you know, you're right there. Everybody's going to see you. Avoid those uh, drugs, alcohol, all those things, because then you're out of control. I've done videos before about control issues. You don't want to give up the little bit of the one third. You don't want to give up your one third to a random drinking and alcohol. You don't want to do that. I'm telling you. Try some of these te 